Hey everyone, Constructor525 here, back with an update video on the Narakage extension, as well as a few other things. It's hard to believe that it's already been two months since I've uploaded episode 8 of the series, and well, you guys saw that I just recently uploaded that sneak peek to uh, my Henry and the Elephant remake that I'm currently working on, and uh, now this. You know, I just wanted to uh, get the videos rolling again, as it has been some time. But um, yeah, without further ado, let, let's go into um, what I wanted to say. So, of course, let, let's, let's first talk about um, what this video is all about, which is this new extension that you guys have know I've been working on for, you know, about a year now. Um, last summer, we started the bench work, my, my father and I, and now we got to the point where we finally started to wire things, as you can see. We've got the Atlas connectors installed. Um, but it's interesting because I've learned that these actually may not be necessary, and I will get into that in just a sec. But I'll first show you the power pack that I've been using. Fortunately, my the Bachman one that I had malfunctioned, and so instead we, we have this model power one as a placeholder. It, it is a nice power pack. Uh, uh, there's enough um, enough power in it and all, but the thing I don't like about it is that you can't really control the speed very well. In other words, if I were to um, roll that up to 20, the engine just like all of a sudden it goes up to like what would be, let's say, speed 60 or 70 on the Bachman controller. So like there isn't really much of a speed difference. Um, and as a result, I think that what we're going to be doing is buying a new Bachman power pack um, instead of using this one just because, you know, you want to have that speed contrast when filming and just running your engines in general. But yeah, let's talk about the wiring. Um, so as you can see, like my, my layout, as you guys knew, is a, is a mix of many different brands of track. You've got uh, Peco, and then you've got American Atlas and and Roco, and a, and as well as the old AHM track that my dad had lying around. And the the thing that all of it is code eighty, but the thing that's really annoying, and this especially especially speaks to the Peco track, is that the system of points and wiring is I realize is not the same. And I know some guy. I, I posted an image on Twitter showing this and thank you guys so much by the way about for all the feedback I, I really appreciate it and I'm glad that you guys are there just give me all the support uh, I need I, I really appreciate it thank you so much but anyways as I was saying there was a guy talking about many people were in fact were, were asking me about where I got this a turn gauge crossing and it's an AHM uh, AHM discontinued crossing by the way you, have, you ought to find this on eBay as all the other um, hobby shops unfortunately don't have it in stock anymore um, but um, the guy, made, I bring this up because the guy was talking about wiring, and apparently some of the crossings uh, he mentioned, if let's say you had the narrow gauge line on, right, what would have been wired to the narrow gauge line, if you had the power going on here, the power would also be going to the HO line. And of course, that's not really what you want, since you want, let's say, Thomas or whoever to sit here or there, and then you're going to want Scarlowe or any of the other narrow gauge engines to run along here. So, so thankfully, this I tested this, and it's good to know that this is separate, this is a separate block than this. So that's great. The Peco stuff though is where is where we get into the, interest of the spurs in particular. Um, these, these, this I haven't wired just yet. But um, what I did notice with the Peco line, I mean there's there's something called insole frog and then there's electro frog. Now, I frankly never really studied the difference between those two. I only just recently discovered the two while wiring. And apparently, um, there's a little box here um, that blocks the power on and off. In other words, what I noticed, see, I don't want to test this out now just because I have my engines lying over there and it's just it's just going to be too much of a hassle to get it all set up. But, um, you know, let's let's just use the spurs as an example since the spurs under there and are, can't be seen. Basically, if I were to run, uh, let's say I had the track wired to here, right? And let's say this was a circle. If I wanted to run the engine without an insulator rail joint here onto the spur, the only way that would be possible is if I changed the spur. In other words, if I had it set like this, and I wanted uh, Reneas or Scarlet or whoever who was sitting right here to run, it wouldn't work, even without an insulated rail joiner. So, and that's where the PECO system is different from what I'm used to in the American system. The Atlas system of track, or, or most systems of American track, the way you wire it when you don't have DCC at least, that, I've, that I'm used to with the rest of the HLA is that you install insulated rail joiners and then you wire each siding separately. So in other words, if it's set to here or here, it doesn't matter. The, what will matter is if the connector is on to that track. So let's say this was the main, the main uh, track 
and then this was that siding that I showed you. So if I turn this on, then the engine will be run even if it's not set to that track. But if I shut this off, then it won't. And that's, and I, and I frankly like that. You know, it's obviously probably much more of a hassle because you have to wire separate lines and everything. But, um, you know, it's what I'm used to. So if anyone in the comments can elaborate more on this, on, um, you know, the whole PECO system of insole frog, electro frog, and just the points in general, I'd really appreciate it because that's something that's actually been a big problem when I've been, when I started wiring this layout. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's just something I wanted to mention. Yeah, as I said, um, because I ran out of PECO narrow gauge track and I had a bunch of end scale track lying around that was the same code, I decided to mix the few. And I did it in such a way where whenever you see, for the most part, whenever you see end scale track, it's going to be inside a mountain, so you won't see the ties versus on um, the PECO track, most of it, except for like areas like back there, um, are will be in the open, so you'll get to see the narrow gauge ties. Like, for example, right here, this is going to be Scarlowy Station from here to here, so that won't be an issue, which is great. Another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that, if you remember, I initially said I was going to put Dryo Station here. Um, I decided to scrap that idea because I was talking, uh, texting with a few people and they gave the suggestion that, you know, it would, it would just look awkward to have an HO dummy line here not connected to anything, especially on like the other side of a hill that's supposed to be a mine. And I agreed with them. So what I decided, I thought about a few locations. One was the Castle Causeway. Another was just a random mountain line weaving around. But I came to the conclusion that, you know, why not make this, the Minnesota Railway Sheds from Season 4? particularly, um, you know, like the ones in uh, Grand Puff, Sleeping Beauty, Duke, Stuart and Falcon slept there. Also, it was briefly shown um, when Scarlowey was talking about the railway to Duncan, things were bad, or, or to Peter Sam too, and I think it was a gallant old engine for it briefly. So that's that. And um, obviously, I need to buy more track for that. So if there's anything that probably won't get finished this summer in terms of scenery and track work, it's going to be this section here, since I still need to buy some more things for that. But I plan, I still plan to finish all of this, scenic it up, have it all wired, and yeah, you guys get the point. So I just wanted to tell you guys about that, and just let me know what you think about the comments. If you guys have any additional suggestions on a narrow gauge scene I could put here, let me know. I think that I have my money on the, the mid sort of railway sheds. I think that would be really neat to do that. So yeah. And other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. I still have, you know, the HO tracks where they've always been have these underneath the board but um but this is a prime example again with the wiring this track you'll notice it's just a, a an oval sorry an oval on the lower level and then this track is separately fitted in other words if I come over here you'll notice that there's a yeah there's a spur right there so I had the track set to here so it's on the lower level, but if I had an engine there, even with the insulator rail joiner, if I wanted it to run, even if I switched the power on, I had I would have to set the spur. So I realized that, yeah, like I know I know I mentioned talking about this wiring stuff a lot, guys, but what I've learned is that with the PECO system, it, apparently it's it seems to not matter if you want it. Um, the, the the rail the insulator rail joiner system that the Atlas system utilizes seems to not play much of a role here, and you could literally just. I guess have the spur set and you'll, you'll be just fine. Um, but that's enough with wiring. I don't want to gibber on just about that. I'm sure you guys want to know about other stuff. Uh, obviously, yeah, yes, this is the latest edition. The, the board up here, which was mounted on 2x4s. Uh, we installed that with a corking gun. And yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with how this came out. And if you guys are wondering, yes, like this big gap here. This big hole was cut so that if an engine, obviously this is all going to be inside a big landscape, so if an engine were to get stuck at the lower level or on this, this line here going up, then I could, you know, go underneath and stick my hand up and then get the engine out or a rolling stock or whatever it is. Yeah. And as always, guys, if you have any questions, comments, just uh, uh, shoot away at the comments in the comment section down there. Um, and that's another thing I want to talk about. You guys, some of you were, one, um, were wondering about the whole made for kids thing versus the, the um, not made for kids. And, uh, you know, frankly, that whole thing has been a, a huge pain in the butt. I'm not uh, happy about how, obviously, the whole new system with YouTube. But what I've decided is that remakes are going to be set to made for kids. And all my other videos will be set to not made for kids. And that's be simply because of the fact that um, the... 
the remakes utilize exact audio from the show. So it's, it's more of just a copyright issue and all that, and obviously Thomas is really, at least the show is supposed to be targeted to younger younger audience, so for that, that that's really the reason for that. And, yeah. So yeah, nothing's really changed here. We had the, the viaduct was always like this, at least from the last update video. And, yeah, coming over here, I recently constructed this shed right here out of cardboard and this is these are wooden coffee stirrers that I three for each leg that I mount, um, glued together just with wood glue simple Elmer's glue nothing too fancy and then for more realistic for more of a realistic look or accurate look to the show I added them to the front and, and back as well and yeah I'm pretty happy with how this came out one of the legs came or supports, I should say, came undone, so I have to re-glue that. And other than that, yeah, everything else is here from the sand. This is Scarloe Station. I, I don't remember if I showed this in the last update video, but that has been in the works. Yeah, nothing much changed here. I can, wh what I will say though, um, just to get on a tangent again, um, that doesn't pertain to the narrative extension is, is other videos uh, coming up. So firstly, you guys know that Bachman's big announcement is in just a few days. And yes, I, I am still on the Stepney train by far. I'm really hoping that Bachman will come through and announce him. Um, you know, because he, without a doubt, guys, he has by far been the most popular candidate amongst social media, the Bachman forum. And, you know, it would just be wonderful to see an engine like him announce for the for the 75th anniversary. You know, I mean, could you guys imagine that, like a classic series, an engine based on the model, classic model series. Last time that really happened, purely, was Bachman Duck, way back in 2012. And, you know, Bachman, it, it, um, they can, you know, announce classic stuff if there's enough demand for it. The reason why they haven't is that, of course, I think Mattel prefers the newer stuff overall, and that fans probably haven't been pushing for it because they almost feel like, you know, their say maybe wouldn't be as weighted, but if we, because it's the 75th anniversary and Stephanie is such a popular character, I think that we can at least make one exception for him, without a doubt. So let's just hope that all this, all the effort we put into our posts and and um, and such really paid off, because it would be wonderful to see him announced. And without a doubt, he will be a very, very popular seller, which would be great for Bachman. And that's that. So yeah, once again, guys, I'm just um, showing you guys my layout. I know it's st still kind of a mess. I've got stuff all over the place. I have this grass mat here. I'm thinking of experimenting with this. You guys know that most of the grass I used in my layout was just sprinkle stuff. And while it is nice, it's not the most accurate to the TV series. I bought this next to my good friend Mulford100 who suggested it um, because it's much more accurate to season four. And I'm thinking about... Um, using it around the incline over here, and we'll just see how it how it blends in with the rest of the layout. If it looks too bright and too green, I can always add in some brown. And I did buy this, some sprinkle stuff, the same color as that, so I can always add like a lighter touch to what was already in part of the rest of the layout, so it doesn't look too jarring or anything like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, going back to other videos, yes, I I'm currently working on a Henry and the Elephant remake. Speaking of which, I have these elephants that I recently bought, which will be featured in the remake. Got one with him just sitting, and then, of course, the, the famous pose in which he sprays Henry with water. So, I actually forgot what brand made these, but they were very cheap. I bought them both for like eight bucks on eBay, and that's definitely not a bad deal. Um, and that should be coming uh, probably in August. And then the other thing is episode 9 of the Soto series, which I know a few of, us, a few of you have asked me about. Um, I just started filming it. The sneak peek should be uploaded, if not this week, next week. And all I can say is that this is definitely going to be probably my, the best Soto series episode yet in terms of action. I know a lot of you have say like, oh, you know, in model train layers, it's much harder to have, you know, very exciting runaways and, and crashes and all this other stuff. But... The one hint, the one sneak peek I will say is that in this episode there's going to be a bit, a massive runaway, and hopefully you guys will enjoy that very much. But as a result, it's going to be much more challenging to film than my other episodes. 
So yeah, there's the, the earliest that'll definitely come out is August. I definitely want to get it up a little before I come go back to school. But if not, I promise you guys that the the wait will be well worth it. That I can assure you of that. Um, and yeah, so episode nine, the sneak peek will definitely be uploaded soon. The full episode, we'll just have to wait and see. And let's see, we talked about the Sodor series. We talked about um, Bachman announcements. Um, I will definitely do a reaction video on that, and that'll probably be my next upload after this. And, of course, the full Henry and the Elephant remake. Possibly a review, too. I mean, of course, my workspace has been very limited for reviews, so I, I don't really know, first, first of all, what I would review, and secondly, um, where I would review it, since, you know, this, this location where I used to do all my reviews, I kind of want to change it just to have kind of a fresh start with the reviews if I were to make more. And I always, I always want to review stuff that people don't really review. So, uh, like, for example, like those of you who want me to review, like, the Bachman Thomas, that's something I wouldn't do because so many people have done it before. And, but something more interesting, like a, like a resin building I haven't done, or perhaps um, some of the new upcoming Bachman products that are going to be released, like Bachman Daisy, that's something that I definitely plan to review. And just to think ahead, even with remakes, um, the other remake I definitely would like to do once Daisy's release is Bullseyes. Um, so yeah, the remakes are, even though it's going to be made for kids, the remakes are definitely not out of the question. I will still uh, make more in the future. So that's that. So at this point, guys, I'm pretty much just rambling on. I'll show you one other part of layout that I've been working on. So see you guys in just a sec. And we're back. So now, as you guys know, I have transitioned to the, the middle of the layout. And as you can see, I have been working on a new hill. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is for two, a few reasons. For starters, with, Nat with Nathan Wade Station, I never ever really liked how the lichen that I had in between the siding and made the way it was just, it just always seemed too short to me. And I also felt like I was wasting a lot of lichen because I had nothing underneath what was there. In other words, if you have, if you have all this lichen and you're building up, you're not going to see the lichen at the bottom if there's lichen on top of it. So why waste lichen and, and do it like that when you could just make a landscape and then glue after, of course, painting this brown, you're adding some grass and whatnot, then putting the lichen on top. And then that could possibly help with making it taller, since you're going to have more lichen, le uh, lichen left over. So that's one reason why I did this. Another thing I didn't like was how long the siding was. If you guys remember, the, the track actually went all the way to here. And this is just on top of that now, because I just wanted to have this siding much shorter as in season as it was in Season 5. I also bought another Bachman water tower to make it more accurate. I might weather it with a green, just to make it more serious vibe accurate, but I'm still thinking about that. I also added the little garage there. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with how Maithwaite is looking. It's, it's definitely changed a lot. So that's Maithwaite. Um, the road here also, it used to just come off the board. Now it goes into this, what's really essentially a narrow gauge tunnel portal. Um, but it works, you know, I, I'm going to paint the inside black so it doesn't look weird. It's all going to be an optical illusion there. And then over here, which is... Really, what I'm trying to do is a mix of the Blacklock Folly, Folly and the Canal Route, I think it was, like in Season 3 and 5. And as you can see, I'm implementing this dummy track here, which I just glued down on cardboard just to level it out. And of course, I have tape here just to make sure so that when I plaster and do all that stuff, it doesn't get onto the rails or the ties, because that could always be a pain. But yeah, let me go to the other side so I can show you guys more. Here we go. So, like, yeah, if you were to remember Bad Day in Castle Lock, you had a track here and a track here. So Donald Douglas would have been on this track. And then this track was just kind of an overgrown green track that went into the causeway. Unfortunately, I have no space for that, as you can see. But um, I'll probably just put a dummy tunnel portal there or just leave it like that and just say, oh, it's a dummy line, you know. But we'll see. Oop, wrong way. <laughs> and there's the Black Lock Folly there. Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with how this is coming along. I have to, The next thing I have to do is put a coat of taping compound on top so I can get rid of all the gaps there and just make the hill much stronger. And then scenic it, of course. Yeah. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to tell you guys. I mean, I have um, 
As you can tell, yes, I, I have not uploaded in quite some time, if you were to not consider my, uh, uh, not including my Henry and the Elephant sneak peek that I just recently uploaded. And I, again, I apologize for that. Just want you to know that I just stated, you know, I got the new episode of the Soto series, Henry and the Elephant, of course the narrow gauge extension, and then this. Like, that's really why, you know, I haven't had time to constantly upload, because I've also been working on different things with the layout. Oh, sorry, just one thing I forgot. Yes, there's also another hill right there to separate the scene of Maithwaite from the quarry, just to, um, you know, divide it up when filming. And that's that. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I mean, stay tuned for more videos to come. Stay active uh, with Bachman's new announcement. I mean, let's hope it's great. You know me, I'm always hoping mostly for stuff, you know, from the model era. I'm not really much of a CGI guy, um, you know, Let's hope they don't announce like Nia, Rebecca, Philip, or some other like weird CGI character that like not many people want. Um, let's just hope they go where the money's at. Which are, you know, characters like Stephanie, Boko, even Arthur. I mean, with the show going on hiatus, um, I really think that like there's a possibility as long as fan there's fan demand that they can make those. And of course, the rest of the main narrow gauge cast, Sir Handel, Duncan, and possibly Duke. But yeah, guys, that's just me. I'm just rambling on now. Um, Thanks again so much for watching this long update video, and I will see you in the next video. Sorry guys, but just a few other things I forgot to mention. Firstly, if you remember, I stated that I was going to have one of the spurs come off the incline from here, and the other one come from here, as in season 4. Unfortunately, the woodwork would have just been way too challenging, because as you'll notice that this is actually higher than this. And it just, I, I could have cut two separate pieces, but... It just really wouldn't have worked out. So, and in addition to that, the um, the, this peco spur actually was giving a very hard time, as the, the what happens is that the the engine would run and then it would stop there and then it just wouldn't go on. So I decided, um, you know, just compromise, put the peco sp uh, spur here, and um, yeah. By the way, yes, um, I keep saying peco. I'm just it's a very bad habit, but thank you to those in the last update video who. Uh, corrected me in saying that it's Pico because yes, it is Pico and I, I apologize for that um, And I also and that brings me to the other thing I wanted to mention which is That um, I know I never responded to many YouTube comments particularly in my last update video for the narrow gauge extension That was mainly because what happened was I initially was it was, it was initially set to made for kids And then I just realized recently that oh, all the comments are back and it's no longer made set to made for kids so again, it's the whole Copa, whole Copa, Copa, whatever, however you pronounce that situation with uh, the made for kids and all that ordeal. Uh, I just think that um, um, I have seen your comments and thank you guys so much um, for posting. But that's just basically why I've never responded to pretty much any of them in the last update video. But I have seen them and thank you guys so much. That's all I wanted to say with that. Um, now this is the final, final thing I wanted to mention. You guys will notice that the lighting really isn't the greatest in this corner versus the layout. You know, this is pretty dark compared to the rest of the layout, which is, you know, has, you know, fluorescent lighting in the ceiling. So as a result, I'm thinking after all of this is set and done, possibly installing one more fluorescent light just so that the lighting looks consistent. Um, uh, I know actually a few of you have asked me about that. So that is basically... Um, what the goal is in terms of lighting. But yeah, um, thank you guys again for watching this very long update video and stay tuned for more videos to come.